I've just got some 320 grit paper here. What I'm going to do is just, just lightly sand the surface. I've got a hard sanding block. So the reason the reason we use a hard sanding block and not, um, not one of these molded uh, sanding blocks, especially on flat surfaces, this will conform to any bumps. So basically what you're going to do is the softer backing is just going to allow those bumps to remain in place where a hard block like this, when you're sanding, it's just going to sand it flat. So that's what we're trying to do. So as I mentioned, this TE is a mahogany kit. So to get a nice flat finish, we're going to need to grain fill it and then prime. So grain filling is really the process of filling in the pores of the timber. So we've left our TE kit to dry overnight. It had two coats of grain fill yesterday. And now I'm just coming back and removing all the excess. So just sanding it down. So what I'd recommend using is um, a higher grit paper, like a 400 or a 600 grit paper should suffice. And what you're really trying to do is just sand flush with the surface of the timber. So when you're sanding, you're not trying to remove any, any timber at all. We're just trying to get it flush with the surface. And that will mean that the pores that we filled yesterday remain filled. So I'll just start sanding and um, I'll sand a section and we'll bring the camera down. Just have a look at what I'm talking about there. As you can see in this, this corner here, you probably see that we've removed most of the excess, but the pore marks, the tiny pore marks are still filled, which is basically what we're trying to do. So if you did sand too far, or if those pore marks weren't filled enough, you may need to consider a third coat. I'd probably make that third coat a little runnier, so add a little bit more water next time. Okay, so that's the guitar all prepped and ready for priming. We've sanded about the grain fill, we've masked up the cavities, cleaned the timber, uh, so now it's time to prime. This has actually turned out quite well. There's not too much grit on the surface or anything. Pretty good day for spraying, really. I sprayed outside and there wasn't too much dust or, or grit flying around, which is good. What we've got here is, is a pretty good job. What I'll be doing is just sanding with a 220 grit paper. Just trying to, <clears throat> just trying to um, scuff up the surface, basically. Make sure it's nice and level so that uh, our solid color coats Couple of things I'd recommend, tips I'd, I'd recommend to avoid sand throughs. I never really sand edges. Um, you'll find you'll find your edges are really quite thin anyway. So what I tend to prefer doing is just avoid the edges and um, sand just sand the main flat surfaces of the body. You know, don't go for a mirror flat finish here. We're really just trying to scuff up the surface so that um, our next coat will take nicely. I've just got some 800 grit paper here. I'm just going to lightly, lightly just rough that paint up a little bit. So I've got the TE kit back up on the bench. It's had 10 coats of clear gloss and about five days to dry. What we want to do next, taking an, about an 800 grit paper, something fairly, fairly fine, and a nice hard sanding block. We just want to start working that unevenness out of the paint. So I'm not sanding aggressively when I'm doing this. I'm just working, working the paint and removing that shine. So I've been sanding for a couple of hours now. And hopefully you can see on camera, we've removed removed almost all of that orange peel. There might be a few little specks here and there, but um, generally the next finer grit of paper will remove that. So I'm moving up now to a 1200 grit paper. I'm just repeating the same process. I'm just basically just removing the scratch marks I've left from the previous grade of paper. This stage normally doesn't take as long as the initial sanding. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna get onto a little bit of wet sanding. From here, again, I'm just gonna use my sanding block. Now it's important to use a fair bit of water when you're wet sanding. Now a couple of things to keep in mind when you're sanding, wet sanding guitar bodies, obviously we've got holes on the body themselves and water gets in those holes. There's ingrain, unsealed timber in there that's going to swell up if it gets too too moist. So definitely have a rag, have a rag nearby. Continually be uh, removing any moisture that accumulates around those holes. So I've finished the wet sanding and now I'm just going to follow up with some fine grade steel wool. So. This super fine grade steel wool you can generally pick up at your local hardware store. What this will essentially do is remove any scratch marks left from the previous um, high grade of, of paper. I've finished polishing up the TE body. As you can see, we've got that nice reflective uh, surface back on the guitar, that nice glossy reflective surface. 